The following program presents principles designed to promote good health and is not intended to take the place of personalized professional care. The opinions and ideas expressed are those of the speaker. Viewers are encouraged to draw their own conclusions about the information presented. You're sick. You don't know what's wrong with you. Do you pray for healing? Take an herb? Or do you make an appointment with your doctor? Stay tuned. I'm Dr. James Markham. Are you interested in discovering the reason why? Do you want solutions to your health care problem? Are you tired of taking medications? Well, you're about to be given the ultimate prescription. You know, I have identified a common challenge, especially among Bible-reading Christians. We want to believe in the healing power of prayer. We want to enjoy the healing energies that God has placed in plants. But we also know that physicians, as well-trained as they might be, don't have all the answers either. When do we put our faith in modern technology, and when do we turn to biblical technology? Dr. Markham, our lives are on the line here. Yeah, that's a great question. Where is the balance in medicine? You know, where, when do we use technology? When do we use lifestyle changes? When do we leave herbs? When do you use massage? You know, when do you use all this? Yeah. Well, Charles, if you're having a heart attack, and if I don't get a stent in you, you're going to die. Yes. That's a great place for modern medicine. That's a wonderful place for modern medicine. If you're in a car accident and you're bleeding to death, you severed a major artery, the EMS comes, you know, we, we're able to sew that back together and yeah. save your life. That's a great place for modern medicine. Um, if your heart's going 20 times a beat, won't go any faster, you need a pacemaker to keep you alive, that's a great place for modern medicine. When I look about all this technology that we have out there, and we have a lot of technology, yes, it's yes. all over the place. Yeah. I wish throughout time that we've developed biblical technology and those concepts as much as we've developed scientific technology and what I call the gadgets. Yes. yes. But the place for modern medicine usually is in an acute care situation. When something's going wrong right now, where if you don't need something happen, something doesn't happen, you will have something serious. Yeah. You know, you pull a kid out that's drowning, his lungs are filled with, with water. You know, you do some CPR, you know, help him breathe better. Yeah. A ventilator, if we don't do something, someone's going to die. Yeah. Um, if their heart's out of rhythm, if we don't shock them right now, they're going to die. Yeah. So I use, I like to tell my patients, that's the place that's best for acute care medicine. That's where we really want to use the technology. Then we want to step back mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. why did we need technology? What did we do that caused the need for technology? And there's, is there anything we can change? I have a patient that came to me not too long ago, 55 years old, done everything right, exercised every day, ate all the right foods, blood pressure perfect, cholesterol exemplary. He had his heart attack at age 55. All three arteries were blocked. Nice. He came and says, you know, where can I do it? I have a good relationship with God. I'm having a daily rest. All this stuff is going on. That can be very frustrating. Well, what did I do wrong? Yeah. Where, where, do I, where can I go from here? Yeah. I said, well, you know, we put a stent in his right coronary artery, and that helped him, his symptoms quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, you know what? The genetic stress that's come throughout time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you wouldn't have done all those things, tell me about your dad. Yeah. And his dad had his heart attack at age 40. So 15 years earlier, I said, well, if you hadn't done this, maybe you would have had it that much earlier. True. And even though the world is not perfect, okay, we have to understand that there is a balance. And that's what I like about this relationship that people can enter with their Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. That, you know what, if, if we die of some catastrophic illness, if we die and we're in that relationship, what do we have to fear? But if we're healed with technology for years and years and years and die and don't have that relationship, what do we have to look forward to? Mm -hmm. So the place for mo there is a place for modern technology, and there's, there's overlap, you know? And what I also use modern, I use pills for people, yeah. but I use pills to, to take away the acute problem until hopefully they can change their chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, and I look like these changes that we've been talking about over the preceding programs is a way to change your chemistry from biblical technology. And I use modern technology, technology as a bridge sometimes to get them that, especially with medications. You know, I don't like the medications. Um, I prescribe people to wear sleep apnea masks where yes. they blow oxygen so they don't suffocate in the middle of the night. Yes. But that's only a bridge to help them lose the weight so maybe they don't have sleep apnea. 
But if, at the same time, if they have genetic problems, they might need modern medicine, and they might need it continually. The gentleman that had the stents is probably going to need blood thinners the rest of his life to help protect the stents. Some people have genetically high cholesterol, and they need medicines the rest of their life. Some people have type 1 diabetes. Before modern medicine, these people would die a premature death. Some babies are born that need congenital heart surgery. They need modern medicine. Um, some people need the things, some people have acute strokes, and nowadays we can put catheters up into the brain and open up the arteries and help save those people's lives. Some people are bleeding, bleeding in the brain from a ruptured aneurysm. We can do surgery if we get them quick enough and fix that aneurysm. Some people have aneurysms in other blood vessels. We can help them. Some people's kidneys fail, and they would die without dialysis. That's a place for modern medicine. There's some cancers that can be treated successfully with modern medicine. If I had a malignant melanoma here in my arm and didn't have it removed at a young stage, that could be fatal. Yes. That's a place for modern medicine. If I detect colon cancer early and treat that, that's a place for modern medicine. So there is a place for modern medicine and acute care technology, and knowing how it fits into this continuum is very important. And there's many programs, many programs out there that people can watch that deal with technology, that deal with lifestyle. But what we're trying to bring to the table is we want you to think about the ultimate physician and his plan for you and how to integrate lifestyle as well as modern technology and also knowing the power that can come from that relationship and how he gives us power to understand when we should use technology, when we should use lifestyle and bring it all together. Now that brings a question to mind because as I drive around my town and I stop by uh, doctor's offices and I look at the parking lot, the doctor's offices are filled with cars out there and if you walk into the doctor's office you see rows and rows of people they're not having a heart attack they're not they're not a victim of uh, an accident they're not bleeding on the floor all of these people are there they're sitting quietly waiting to see a doctor wanting modern technology to deal with the problems they're facing is there an issue there is there a problem there yes there's a major problem and we have a, a big health care crisis in our country yeah. you know one in every five dollars is spent on health care and we're not necessarily solving any problems but we're treating many symptoms unfortunately our system I don't know about the other physicians but I have 10 minutes to see a follow-up patient and 20 minutes to see a new patient wow. we cannot cover all the things that need to be accomplished in that short period of time mm -hmm. That's why I like to get information on programs like this, where people can have more information to know all these things. But yes, we have a big problem. It's, it's, it's more than any one person can correct, but we have to have each individual look at their health and work individually. We're not going to solve it with a government mandate. We're not going to solve it with insurance companies. The American Medical Association is not going to solve this problem. Yeah. But we do have a problem, and I think people recognize it. But unfortunately, in the world we live in, unless we can change everything, I don't think the real problem is going to be solved until Christ comes home and heals us. But those people sitting in that doctor's office have come there to be fixed. They yes. have a problem, and you're calling it a symptom. Yes. They're okay. coming, and they say, doctor, fix me. Can you even do right. that? And that's why I like to be very honest. And some people do not like the honest approach. When I look someone in the eye and say, listen, um, I can't fix this problem. I can help the symptoms, but I can't fix this problem. The high blood pressure, yes. the high blood Whatever. sugar, the, the, the arterial uh, right. sclerosis, the, the th things that are happening inside of us. You can't fix it. No, we can't fix it, but we can lower the risk some. Mm -hmm. And when I tell them that it's going to take getting back to God's plan to yeah. sort of lower your risk, it's going to take His healing power. For instance, Charles, mm. you know, when you have a broken arm, the yeah. doctor sets the arm, yeah. but who really does the healing? Really? God really does the healing. When someone has a heart attack, sure, we put in a stent to help limit the damage, but who really does the healing? Mm -hmm. Where does the healing really come from? And as we start thinking along these lines and move our focus on the great physician and not the focus on technology or even lifestyle, I think as we do that, we will be blessed. We'll be blessed as people. We'll be blessed in this message. And when people hear that, they're going to say, yes, 
this, is, this makes sense to me. I want to enter into this relationship because I want to be healthy. Teach me more. This makes sense to me. There is, there is someone that loves me and wants me to feel better. And that will help us know when to use technology. I use technology every day. Yeah. Every single day I use it. But I try to use it appropriately. And some people out there with technology, they make money off technology. Yes. So they do. some people, that's all they know. And that's why we want to educate them on these things. We need more studies in, in things that we've talked about today, about biblical techniques, of how chemistry proves it. We have a few studies here and there, but we need lots of studies done to prove the scientific principles behind the Bible. Okay, let's say that, uh, that there's a patient standing outside of a doctor's office. What, what symptoms would you say require that that person open the door and go in and see the doctor and what symptoms are you saying that well let's go home and let's learn some biblical technology and let's deal with those symptoms with lifestyle changes. Right. And that's why it takes a, a relationship with your physician who knows you the best that can look at the myriad of details that make up you. But the physicians don't get it. You're rare Dr. Markham. You're, you're, not, the, you're not the rule. You're the exception to the rule. If a person goes to a doctor, that doctor is going to give them a procedure or a pill and then send them a bill. That's going to happen. Yes. How do we as patients okay. make the choice of where to go to get the help we need? Because, you know, if you stop and think about it, some of the symptoms that we may be suffering from are scary. Yeah. We think, I'm, I'm going to die here. Uh, I, need, I need to do something very quick. How do we know when to go see you and when to turn to the Bible? Well, you know, you need to go to find someone you trust. And that's why I want to start people with the great physician. Mm. Usually, if someone thinks they're having an emergency, the place to go is an emergency room. Yeah. And I tell people that chest pain that won't okay, go away. chest pain, all right. Chest pain that won't go away, a headache that might be an aneurysm, low blood pressure, low blood sugar, many different things that we okay. can't explain that needs acute care medicine. They need to get to the hospital. They need to get acute care help right away. Okay. Then usually once the... Now, are, are these sudden things that come up? I mean, sometimes, sometimes not. There's not... Everyone okay. wants a quick answer that yeah. will go with everybody. Yeah. But we're all individuals and each individual has a different answer. Yeah. So your answer might not be the same as a person that's blood sugar has been going higher and higher over yeah. a period of time yeah. okay. and now they're dehydrated. Yeah. Someone that's had an infection for three or four weeks might not need to see an emergency right away but as this infection develops it yes. might be more problems. Okay. Someone that has cancer that's untreated, it's according to where we get the stage of the illness. All right. You know, a full-blown heart attack needs help, yeah. but a patient that has stable symptoms might be able to be managed in the office for a while. So I wish there was an answer that, that fit everybody, and that's why they call it the practice mm -hmm. of medicine. Mm -hmm. It's not this algorithm that works for everyone, but there's general principles that we want to bring people back to. So our viewers right now who are living their lives and going through their days to day, if they were to start applying some of the principles and laws of health that we've been talking about on this program. Now is the time to do it, not later. When you have a chronic condition, let's start changing lifestyle things. If you're not dying right now, and you're not going to die tomorrow, now is the time to begin dealing with this thing from a, a natural or lifestyle way. Right. But if you are short of breath, if you have pain in the chest, if you are bleeding out... If you're having a symptom. If you're having a symptom that is, that is life-threatening, that you, that you identified just right. then, Go see the doctor. Good thing to do. Okay, we have some questions to answer from our viewers on our return at www.heartwiseministries.org. We'll answer those questions on our return, so don't go away.